I've been at MIT for a long time. It's pretty ironic because I didn't want to go to MIT and when I was applying to colleges, my mom and I had a long conversation and she said, you know, do me a favor. I'm from the Boston area and she said, do me a favor, apply to MIT and you don't have to go, but just apply. It's something that you, you know, you should do. And I said, oh, I'm never going to get in. It doesn't even matter. Even if I got in, I wouldn't go, but okay, fine, I'll do that. And I kind of, Put, you know, put together an application, did my best, but I wasn't happy about it, uh, and I applied. And she knew exactly the day that the, the admissions decisions came in, so she was waiting by the mail. I was at the mall with my friend, and uh, she calls me, and you know, I just got my first cell phone, so this is really exciting. She calls me, and she's like, guess what happened? And I was like, I don't know, what's supposed to happen today? She's like, oh, you got into MIT, and I was like, mm. Cool. I know. I guess that's that's cool. Um, and I came to visit, and I actually just fell in love with the people around here. So the people were excited about what they were working on. They were smart people who weren't afraid to be smart people. They were talking about things that you know got them excited. They were all passionate about their subject and what they were learning, and that just completely changed my mind. So within like three hours, I had been totally. I was here for the whole weekend, and in three hours, I had totally changed my mind. Now it's pretty funny because they can't really get rid of me. So I did my undergraduate in mechanical engineering. The summer before my senior year, I took an internship with an, uh, an engineering consulting firm. Um, and the environment there was very stuffy and very slow and very quiet. And I just didn't get excited by that environment. And so I started kind of thinking about what alternatives there were. I also uh, learned about what grad school was around that time in my life. And that fall semester of my senior year, I took a class on product design and that completely changed everything about, you know, I was all of a sudden excited about engineering again. I was all of a sudden excited about teams and people and, and things like that. Um, and it really encouraged me to, to apply to grad school. So then I applied to grad school in uh, programs that were, again, that intersection between people and technology. And so they were business programs as well as uh, technology uh, deployment programs. The program that I wound up uh, accepting was at MIT, it was called Technology and Policy, and it was the intersection of big picture policy and, and laws and regulation, and also technology and scientific discovery. And so how can the government encourage scientific discovery? Also, how can the government keep people safe from technology? And things like that were really important. Um, during that period, I realized that I missed making things and I missed building things and I missed doing things with my hands. So I applied back into the mechanical engineering department for my PhD. Uh, realized I also, during that time, I also realized I loved research. And so I applied back to mechanical engineering, uh, got accepted, and then started my PhD with a professor in material science. And so one of the cool things about engineering is that physics is physics, and it's physics whether you're in mechanical engineering or if you're in material science. And so you can apply things across boundaries and work with new people, learn new things, and also uh, kind of give a new perspective to, uh, to an interesting discipline. Um, in my PhD, I worked on water filtration membranes, and so I worked on nanomaterials, so things using nanotechnology to improve the cost and the uh, the efficacy of filtering water for drinking water. That could be from seawater, it could be from wastewater, it could be from fresh water, um, and on the technologies related to that. My favorite subject in high school was science. I took AP Environmental Science as a sophomore in high school and that really shaped everything I've done kind of in my life since then. I liked all the other science subjects after that because it all fed in, it all kind of made sense because I had a goal, which was environmental sustainability. My environmental science teacher, Mr. Griffin, was a huge shaper of my kind of journey through science. He was the advisor of the environmental club, so he allowed us to take on all these new projects. Um, and he, he kind of encouraged us to do everything. We didn't just have to do science. We could play on the sports team as well as do science, and that kind of allowed all of us to be, I guess, more well-rounded people. I was only one of two girls in my math and science classes in high school. Um, those classes were small, but there were it was all boys, and I was 
good friends with the guys, but I didn't have any other uh, girls in those in those classes. One of the coolest things about going to college was all of a sudden there were all these other girls who liked science and that I could, you know, not just talk about science with, but talk about that new nail polish color that just came out. And um, that was really mind blowing to me when I got to college.